cheia, o salão está vazio. Como dança na sombra da castanheira, o Amazonas da sinal que liberou. O amor é livre, pode ser feito na areia. Vem, vai dançar. O governors, human rights, and people participation on all those things. Sierra Foundation was founded by uh, 15 environmental NGOs in Finland and uh, with the mandate to uh, direct development cooperation funds directly to certain organizations who have ideas of their own environmental projects. Uh, we wanted to, to um, give a voice to these southern organizations so that they can uh, decide what sort of projects they want to realize and so that they can get their voices heard. Over the, during this year we have uh, formulated a new strategy and we wanted to uh, submit this strategy under the criticism uh, of uh, outsiders, uh, of uh, environmental activists from the south and also uh, to the people uh, working in a similar funding organizations and we are. We also wanted to, to create, uh, to open a discussion on ecological democracy which is uh, uh, one of our focus themes. One concept uh, which cannot be defined in, uh, confined to any geographical political boundaries like India or um, Kenya or Tanzania or Brasilia. It has to be a universal perspective with local specificities intact. Because ecological democracy is one concept which is closest to Gandhi's idea of identity, of concentric circles. Imagine yourself throwing a stone in sea. It results in different circles. And no circle is destroying the other. It's only merging in the other, or supporting the other, or creating the other. So that is the uh, relationship between different circles of ecology if it is democratic, then no circle will destroy the other. And the whole globe in the ecological sense is a interconnected, not just whole globe, but the whole universe, mm -hmm. whole cosmos is ecologically connected with each other and in a very delicate way and in a very sensitive way. So ecological democracy is that part of our living reality which defines the relationship between humans and the nature and also non-living in a fashion where people don't lose control over their lives. That is why it is not just ecology, it is ecological democracy. But you know, uh, this term ecological democracy is quite new and uh, it is uh, sort of generating a uh, uh, lot of enthusiasm and uh, a curiosity all over the world. So, you know, in the Semenpu's uh, international seminar, so many people wanted to know what ecological democracy is all about. So, my contention was that ecological democracy is uh, not beyond the comprehensive democracy. It is part of uh, the democracy as a whole. And uh, when we talk about uh, ecological democracy, we of course have its uh, other dimensions like economic, political, social, cultural and gender. So we cannot see uh, ecological democracy thing in isolation. And uh, it is just for the convenience convenience to understand. So when we segregate this, uh, this particular part of uh, ecological democracy, uh, of course being uh, uh, an integral part of the uh, 
democracy as a whole, uh, then we mean that it is uh, about uh, people's access, people's right over their natural resources, which they have been cherishing, with the, which they have been enjoying for a long time. And you know, for example, in uh, our central Himalayan region, mm -hmm. people used to have uh, free and uh, uh, unlimited access to their natural resources. Now, with the uh, advent of uh, the British, the rights were curtailed, and uh, uh, now they are gradually being uh, uh, curtailed even further. The, uh, now the laws, the government laws are such that they don't allow people mm -hmm. to go to the sanctuaries, they don't allow people to go to the biosphere regions. They don't allow people to uh, collect uh, uh, the the fallen uh, wood for uh, their consumption, for for uh, uh, their kitchen. So uh, and even the fodder is an in inaccessible uh, uh, for the common people. So the common people are facing a lot of difficulties back home, and it's just not the central Himalayan part. Uh, the situation is almost the same in all other parts of the country or uh, in South Asia. For more than 200 years, 300 years, you know, you've got uh, people who have been protecting environment, um, whether in Europe and whatever, and their particular conceptions. You know, those conceptions, for example, in Africa, creation of game reserves for hunters, who are called uh, professional hunters, yeah? Because that is generating money for the state and whoever it is. At the same time, excluding the rights of people who are supposed to have been settled there for many years and whatever. The creation of national parks and whatever. That's part of that conservation. Creation of forest reserves and excluding other people, but at the same time giving settlers a place to a place to farm and whatever. Now Within that context, when land is being grabbed, resources are being grabbed, then you start talking about uh, ecological democracy in terms of how people can be able to participate in whatever. But I, I, I thought, you know, somewhere, somewhat, you know, if one must talk about uh, that democracy, then it must uh, also include the question of how are people, those who are poor, marginalized, how are they able to control their own resources? How are they able to access? both productive and reproductive resources. I think that's more important. In that regard, you'll discover that it's not just the ecological democracy. You're d dealing with broad issues of democracy in terms of democracy beyond simple politics of multi-party, but democracy is struggles over resources, for livelihood, you know, struggles against the domination, exploitation, and all this kind of thing. Similarly, ecological democracy will have its own specificity in each historical times. For example, the pre-colonial period had different connections with each segment of life as they have now. If we, the colonial consciousness has delegitimized our knowledge systems about nature. In a very interesting study in the sub-Saharan region of Rajasthan, which is a western province of India, you discover that children who have been to schools have lost their ecological sensitivity and learning. It is only the traditional old men or men and women who will tell you that these 12 kilometers are this zone and after 12 kilometers, the soil would be like this, the weather would be like this, the wind blow would be like this, the greenery would be like this, flora and fauna would be like this. So they have each detail mapped out and they can tell you, uh, they can forecast the weather, they can find out the underground water, where it would be, how deep it would be and they lose this uh, skill. But, uh, the other very important opportunity that the idea of ecological democracy provides is at last uh, the beginning of a way in which perhaps the generally northern, certainly urban people who tend to dominate decision making and control and power in the world can find a way of understanding the thinking and the way of seeing of 
the majority of people who are still living in rural areas and who see the world very differently generally. Now the present form of globalization first wants to destroy those livelihood engagements uh, and then create decent world, sustainable world. So it should immediately count its destruction of those livelihood engagements of fisher folk, of artisans, of small independent peasants, uh, 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 you know, all these kind of... do CNS e dos trabalhadores de hoje organizado na Amazônia é, é lutar pela garantia, é buscar essa garantia de, de, de direitos. Mas como desafio também temos a questão da, 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 de, de colocar essa conquista que a gente está fazendo dentro de um contexto de desenvolvimento. Porque a nossa comunidade amazônica é uma comunidade que sempre ficou alijada das políticas públicas e é uma comunidade muito carente de, do próprio conhecimento. O analfabetismo é muito alto. Então, a, 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 a carência da escrita, da, da leitura, ela, ela coloca a, a nossa comunidade numa condição assim, de uma dificuldade muito grande de avançar com uma certa velocidade dentro de do, 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 do uma conjuntura em que a, a tecnologia é, 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 é o instrumento primordial para o desenvolvimento. E essa tecnologia, para a nossa realidade, ela é, ela é muito escassa, né? a existência é muito pequena, é muito pouca, e nós estamos num esforço muito grande. O principal desafio é você gerar um, um conhecimento que possa dar conta de, de, de enxergar esse lado bem peculiar da Amazônia, da floresta, e, 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 e esse conhecimento, de, a gente não perder esse conhecimento, internalizar esse conhecimento e esse conhecimento conseguir desenvolver nossas comunidades e melhorar a qualidade de vida das pessoas. E, e, e com a ameaça, o sistema para nós, o sistema capitalista, para nós é a principal ameaça porque o nosso modelo de, 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 de desenvolvimento, o nosso modelo de reforma agrária é um modelo muito novo, muito, muito novo e, e, e não conseguiu se, se estruturar dentro, da, dentro de uma política ainda arrojada de, de governo. E aí já o projeto capitalista é um projeto que vem de longas datas, que vem de muito tempo, que está extremamente estruturada e com, uma, com um poder político muito forte, extremamente um grupo muito, com muito poder. Então a ameaça para nós é, é, é o modelo capitalista que, que, que avança com uma velocidade muito grande em cima da nossa região. E aí nós temos milhares de famílias, milhares de áreas que precisam ser, 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 ser conquistadas, precisam ser, ser conservadas, preservadas dentro desse, desse contexto de, 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 das comunidades tradicionais. E aí a, a, a nossa lentidão para estar tá conquistando isso ainda é pequena. Então isso para nós é uma das principais ameaças. É, é o modelo econômico hoje que está em curso, né? que a velocidade é muito grande e que a gente... e o nosso é muito lento. Então temos medo de perdermos essa, essa, essa corrida assim não conquistar. É uma pérola que brilha nesse Democracy would mean that every person of a particular state or society would have access to food, shelter, clothing and other things. But at the same time, if there is a contestation of the way in which you, you sort of try to achieve these goals, you can try to achieve these goals in a non-sustainable way, in a non-ecological way, in a non-democratic way, as in a totalitarian regime. You can also try to achieve these goals in a democratic way, in an ecological way, in a sustainable development approach way. So I think ecological democracy would possibly hint at such a system whereby people's democracy and people's ecological practices go hand in hand for people's needs, not without thinking of people's needs. 
we have to make sure that everyone gets food, everyone gets shelter, everyone gets clothing. But at the same time, and also there is another issue here, which is very important, is that I think democracy, when you understand democracy, you only understand democracy of that, you know, we are four people or we are 400 million people in the state, and so we have democracy between us. But there, if a democratic attitude is perfectly thought of, then we should also think of the future generations. Mm -hmm. So if today we completely ravage our lands mm -hmm. by the fact that the fertility goes down on the land, then generations after 50 years will hold us responsible that because of our using of fertilizers or pesticides, our land is you know, now barren. We would not face that situation, but then the future generations would. So there is a concept in democracy, and which is again linked to ecology as well, of thinking of those generations. Another fact of ecological democracy, if it comes to my mind, is that any kind of development when it, is, when, it is, when it is very expansionary has a very adverse effect on ecology and on people's lives and I have I can give you one example which is when oil was discovered in the Arabian lands in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere the American oil companies went to Saudi Arabia like hordes and they completely transformed the Saudi society and the age-old traditions of the Arab world were completely broken. And commerce, you know, companies like, you know, Aramco and others, just took over everything. So what we are seeing today in the name of, you know, global terrorism coming from you know, Islamic fundamentalism and so forth, can have actually roots in the fact that a certain ecological life, a certain ecological, not in the sense of ecology, but in the sense of sustainable practices over traditions, or over centuries, traditions that are going on. So I think when, when we talk of ecology, we should also understand that it is an issue of sustainable development and ecology going hand in hand, meaning traditions of societies have close relations to ecology. And, and every, you know, in a desert, people live in one way, in a hill, in a, in a hilly situation, people live in one way, in a plain land, people live in one way. So I think this kind of an expansionary attitude violates all notions of ecological democracy of any time. Um, I of course think that the term ecological democracy is kind of, it's just to bring in or to try to kind of give a thrust to the twin notions of democracy. Well, uh, then when we talk about the creation or even maintaining of the national parks, there is one common phenomenon in all the continents in Asia, but I also heard about this particularly in Western Africa and and, in, and also Latin America someplace, but but that very often this national mark, park means a place what you can't really use and where you just go around and admire the nature. And though this kind of concept is not really the concept we have here in Finland because we have this every, every man's uh, right. So in Finland you can go to the national park and pluck berries and get some firewood and food and you know, do quite many things, hunt even and like that. So, but this uh, kind of Anglo-American maybe concept or Anglo, Anglo kind of German whatever concept is that it, it is an intact place. And, and that is, of course, by definition, very, very problematic because people who have been living in, in this, uh, near this nation for thousands of years, they've always used it. And, but then at some point it might become unsustainable when they start logging larger quantities and, and you know, doing this and this. And then when we think that, well, we have to stop this and you know, create this national park, nature reserve or something, to stop this logging and often what this means is that maybe some this spot might be then preserved but then they start to log some place else near there or some or then the other option is of course that the people uh, get unemployed and, and you know got done got any, anything to eat anymore and have to either <laughs> starve to death or you know have to leave the place or something so it, it causes tremendous local and social and economical problems. So how to kind of 
um, deal with this. Of course, this also means, uh, depends on the place. <laughs> Amazonas, the sky is blue.